What if the key to understanding Europe's past isn't hidden in dusty books or ancient ruins, but in DNA? Today, more than 300 million people speak Slavic languages. They stretch from the Baltic to the Adriatic, from the heart of Europe to the vast Russian plains. The Slavs are Europe's largest language family, yet one big question has stayed with us for centuries. Where did the Slavs come from? This journey takes us not just across space, but through time itself. Using modern genetic research, archaeological finds, and historical records, we can now see how the Slavic people emerged and spread across Europe. Present-day Slavic peoples fall into three main groups, the East Slavs, Russians, Ukrainians, and Belarusians the West Slavs, Poles, Czechs, Slovaks, and others the South Slavs, Serbs, Croats, Bulgarians, and other Balkan Slavic peoples the first written mention of Slavs dates to the 6th century CE, but their genetic story begins thousands of years earlier. And this story might surprise you. When Byzantine historian Procopius first described the Slavs in the 6th century, he wrote, They are tall and especially strong, their skin is not very white, and their hair is neither blonde nor black, but all have reddish auburn hair. They are neither dishonorable nor spiteful, but simple in their ways. Strangely, modern Slavic populations have among the lowest rates of red hair in Europe, less than 1%. This difference shows us that the Slavic story is one of change, not staying the same. To understand the Slavs, we need to go back not just hundreds, but thousands of years, to the Bronze Age, around 3000 BCE. The genetic origins of Slavic people connect directly to the Yamnaya culture, nomads who herded animals across the vast grasslands between the Black and Caspian Seas. These horse riders carried genetic markers that would later become common in all Slavic populations. When scientists study ancient Yamnaya remains, they find R1A genetic signatures, markers passed from father to son, that still show up in 40-65% of Slavic men today. But genes tell only part of the story. The Yamnaya were also spreading Indo-European languages, the early forms of today's Slavic tongues. When looking at ancient DNA from graves across Eastern Europe, scientists see a clear genetic shift when these steppe peoples arrived. By 2500 BCE, the genetic makeup of Central and Eastern Europe changed again with the rise of the corded ware culture. They got their name from their pottery, which had cord patterns pressed into it. These people had about 75% Yamnaya ancestry mixed with local European farmer DNA. This culture lived in areas from modern Germany to Russia, laying important genetic foundations for future Slavic populations. Around 1600 BCE, the Trisiniac culture developed across what is now Poland, Belarus, and Ukraine. Their burial customs and metal workings suggest they were developing toward what would become the Proto-Slavic culture. DNA from Trisiniac graves shows a genetic profile increasingly similar to modern Slavic populations. The Slavic identity didn't appear suddenly but grew slowly over hundreds of years. Between 1000 BCE and 200 CE, Archaeological finds across Eastern Europe show increasing cultural unity even as genetic diversity continued. The Lusatian culture, centered in what is now Poland and Eastern Germany, developed advanced bronze working and cremation practices that would later influence Slavic burial customs. Genetic samples from remains show those important R1A lineages alongside more diverse maternal genetic lines, showing complex patterns of marriage and migration. As the Roman Empire grew along its eastern borders, it met peoples they called Veneti, or Veneti. Roman historian Tacitus described these groups living near the Vistula River, exactly where early Slavic cultures would later be found. DNA from burial sites in this region reveals populations carrying genetic signatures that would become typical of Western Slavic peoples. Climate studies provide another important clue. A warm period around 300-500 CE matched up with farming expansion in the Slavic homeland region. Pollen samples from ancient lakes and bogs show increased grain growing precisely when Slavic populations began to grow dramatically. This better climate allowed Slavic farmers to grow more food, which fueled population growth and eventual expansion. By the 6th century CE, something remarkable happened. Slavic-speaking populations began a massive expansion that would reshape the ethnic map of Europe. This wasn't one big migration but a complex spread influenced by many factors, population growth, better farming, changing power balances, and the fall of the Western Roman Empire. 
the expansion went in multiple directions. To the west, Slavic groups moved into lands emptied as Germanic tribes migrated toward the collapsing Roman Empire. To the south, they crossed the Carpathian Mountains and entered the Balkans. To the north and east, they mixed with Baltic and Finno Ugric peoples. This expansion wasn't always peaceful. Byzantine records describe Slavic raids and settlements across the Danube frontier. Archaeological evidence shows burned Byzantine forts and new settlements with distinctive Slavic pottery appearing throughout the Balkans. But genetic evidence reveals something even more interesting. Rather than completely replacing older populations, Slavic expansion often involved cultural blending with existing peoples. DNA studies of modern Balkan populations show that about 30-40% of their genetic ancestry comes from the original Slavic homeland, while the rest comes from pre-existing Balkan populations. This suggests a complex process where relatively small numbers of Slavic migrants established cultural and linguistic dominance while marrying with local populations. The Prague Korchuk and Penkovka archaeological cultures show the material evidence of this early Slavic expansion. Their distinctive pottery, semi-underground houses, and cremation burials spread across Eastern Europe between the 5th and 7th centuries CE. When archaeologists extract DNA from remains linked to these cultures, they find a genetic profile that connects earlier populations with modern Slavic groups. The Avars, a Turkic people who established a powerful kingdom in the Carpathian Basin during the 6th-8th centuries, played a complex role in Slavic development. At first they controlled Slavic populations, but eventually they helped Slavic military and political organization grow. Genetic studies of Avar burial grounds show increasing Slavic mixture over time, reflecting a relationship that changed from control to integration. As Slavic communities established the first medieval states, genetic diversity grew further through elite interaction, trade, and warfare. Great Moravia emerged in the 9th century as one of the first powerful Slavic states, centered in parts of modern Czechia, Slovakia, and Hungary. DNA from high-status burials at Mikulsis and other Great Moravian centers reveals a complex genetic picture, mostly Slavic foundations with Germanic, Avar, and even Mediterranean influences among the upper classes. This genetic evidence backs up historical accounts of Great Moravia as a multicultural frontier state. In Eastern Europe, the formation of Kievan Rus united Eastern Slavic tribes under leadership that included Norse Varangian elements. The primary chronicle describes how Rurik and his Varangian brothers were invited to rule over the Slavs in the late 9th century. Genetic evidence partly confirms this account. Elite burial sites in Kiev and Chernihiv show about 20% Scandinavian genetic markers mixed with a mostly Slavic genetic base. DNA analysis of Rurikid dynasty princely remains shows the presence of NM231 genetic markers, common in Scandinavian and Finnic populations but rare among Slavs. This supports the Norse origin of this ruling dynasty. Yet within a few generations, the Rurikids had thoroughly married with local Slavic elites and adopted Slavic language and customs. To the south, the First Bulgarian Empire underwent a remarkable transformation. Founded by Turkic Bulgars who conquered Slavic populations in the lower Danube region, the empire gradually became Slavicized through marriage and cultural exchange. Modern Bulgarian DNA reveals this history. About 4-5% Central Asian genetic markers remain embedded within an otherwise typical South Slavic genetic profile. Christianity transformed Slavic societies beginning in the 9th century, with missionaries Cyril and Methodius creating the Glagolitic script to translate religious texts into Slavic languages. This cultural revolution has left traces not just in language and culture but in genetic patterns as well. The building of monasteries created new centers of population movement while Christian rules against cousin marriage gradually changed family patterns and genetic diversity. The Mongol invasion of the 13th century deeply affected Eastern Slavic development. The Golden Horde ruled large areas of modern Russia and Ukraine for over two centuries, creating a political division between Western and Eastern Slavs that would have lasting effects. Many people assume there was significant genetic influence from the Mongol conquests, but DNA tells a more nuanced story. DNA studies of modern Russians, Ukrainians, and Belarusians show only a modest 2-3% East Asian genetic contribution, mainly in regions east of Moscow. Y chromosome studies find Asian paternal lineages at low frequencies about 1-2% in some Eastern Slavic populations. 
The greatest Mongol genetic impact appears in noble families who married with the Golden Horde elite. Genetic analysis of aristocratic Russian remains from the 13th-15th centuries shows increasing East Asian ancestry over time, reflecting strategic marriages between Rurikid princes and Mongol Tatar nobility. Famous Russian princes, including Alexander Nevsky, had documented marriage alliances with the Khans. While the genetic impact was limited, the cultural and political consequences were profound. Eastern Slavic territories under Mongol rule developed different military, administrative, and architectural traditions than their Western counterparts. Moscow's rise as the dominant Eastern Slavic power came directly from its skillful navigation of Mongol politics, with Muscovite princes serving as tax collectors for the Khans before gradually asserting independence. Modern genetic studies create a detailed picture of Slavic ancestry. The most comprehensive surveys have sequenced the DNA of over 8,000 individuals across all Slavic nations, showing both shared heritage and regional differences. A key genetic signature of Slavic populations is the prominence of R1AZ282, a paternal lineage that likely originated around 4,500 years ago in Eastern Europe. This Y chromosome marker reaches its highest worldwide frequencies in Poland, Russia, and Ukraine, where it appears in 50-65% of men. Its distribution closely matches the boundaries of Slavic languages, though it appears at lower frequencies in southern Slavic populations 30-40%. Maternal lineages tell a complementary story. Mitochondrial DNA haplogroups H, U5, J, and T, linked to early European farmers and hunter-gatherers, predominant across Slavic populations. Unlike paternal lineages, these maternal markers show greater continuity with pre-Slavic populations, suggesting that Slavic expansion often involved male-dominated migration followed by marriage with local women. Autosomal DNA, the genetic material inherited from all ancestors, not just direct paternal or maternal lines, reveals that all Slavic peoples share a core genetic component that likely originated in Eastern Europe during the Bronze Age. This, Slavic genetic component, typically makes up 50-70% of total ancestry in modern Slavic populations, with the remainder coming from neighboring groups. Adaptive genetic traits also differ across Slavic regions. Lactose tolerance, the ability to digest milk as an adult, appears at high rates, 70-80%, among Western Slavs like Poles and Czechs, moderate levels, 60-65%, in Eastern Slavs, and lower levels, 40-55%, among southern Slavs. These differences reflect varied histories of animal herding and dietary practices. Genetic adaptations to cold climates appear more frequently in northern and eastern Slavic populations. The TRPM8 gene variant, which affects cold perception, shows a clear north-south pattern across Slavic territories. Similar patterns appear in genes related to metabolism and fat storage, reflecting adaptations to different environments. Although sharing deep roots, modern Slavic populations show considerable regional genetic diversity reflecting their unique historical experiences. Western Slavs, Poles, Czechs, and Slovaks show clear genetic connections with Germanic and Baltic populations. About 15-25% of their genetic ancestry traces to Germanic sources, reflecting centuries of interaction along the shifting frontier between Slavic and Germanic territories. The highest Germanic mixture appears in Western Poland and the Czech Republic. Eastern Slavs, Russians, Ukrainians, and Belarusians display more complex patterns. Northern Russians show significant Finno-Ugric ancestry 15-30%, particularly in regions around Novgorod and Pskov. This Finnic component decreases in Southern Russian populations and among Ukrainians, where steppe ancestry from Scythian, Sarmatian, and other Iranian-speaking nomads becomes more prominent 10-20%. Southern Slavs, Serbs, Croats, Bulgarians, and others, reflect their position at the crossroads of Europe and Asia. Genetic studies identify significant pre-Slavic Balkan ancestry 40-60% derived from ancient Illyrian, Thracian, and Roman provincial populations. Greek ancestry appears more strongly in Bulgarian and Macedonian Slavs 10-15% while Western Balkan Slavs show greater connections to Italian populations across the Adriatic. Religious and cultural boundaries have sometimes reinforced genetic divisions. Croatian and Serbian populations, despite speaking basically the same language, show subtle genetic differences that align with their historical Catholic and Orthodox religious spheres. 
Similarly, Orthodox Eastern Slavs showed different mixture patterns than their Catholic and Protestant Western Slavic neighbors. Yet despite these regional variations, all Slavic peoples remain connected by deep ancestral ties. When geneticists analyze all the genetic evidence, they consistently identify a shared genetic core that unites Slavic populations and distinguishes them from their non-Slavic neighbors. The Slavic legacy in our DNA in modern genetic science has transformed our understanding of Slavic origins. Through analysis of ancient remains, historical records, and modern populations, it becomes clear that the Slavs emerged from centuries of interaction, not isolation. The story written in Slavic DNA reveals not a simple tale of migration and conquest, but a complex pattern of cultural adoptions, technological innovations, intermarriage, and adaptation. Far from the myths of pure ethnic origins, genetic science reveals the Slavs as a remarkably adaptive people whose success came from integration rather than isolation. Their legacy, marked not by purity but by adaptability, lives on in the DNA of millions. From the genes that influence language ability to those that regulate immune responses to local diseases, modern Slavic populations carry genetic adaptations shaped by their unique historical journey. As research continues, more secrets of the past emerge, hidden in bones, artifacts, and the genes of those who walk the lands their ancestors once called home. The genetic journey of the Slavs represents not just the story of one ethno-linguistic group, but a window into how all human populations evolve through the complex interplay of migration, mixture, and cultural exchange. The Slavic story reminds us that identity comes not from isolation, but from connection, a powerful lesson written in the genetic code of one of Europe's most influential peoples.